comfortable saddle is crucial for riders of all cycling disciplines, whether you're a road, gravel, or mountain biker. And whatever your gender, in this guide, we're going to talk you through how to choose the best saddle for you. Before we go any further, we want to thank our sponsors Pro Logo for helping us make this video and supplying us with a huge range of saddles. And you can find more about them with a link in the video description. We'll start by going into the fundamentals of how a saddle works, or rather, how it should work. Why different disciplines demand different shapes of saddle, why women's saddles are different, the anatomy of a saddle, and finally, how to choose the right one for you. There are few other aspects of cycling that are so personal. The perfect saddle for one rider could be akin to a torture device for another. With so much to think about, finding the right bike saddle can be daunting, especially with so many different saddle models, sizes and shapes on offer. A well-fitted saddle should enable you to get the most out of your ride, whether that's sustained power efforts, riding for days on end, or getting you to the trailhead. You should be able to do all of this free from discomfort. A suitable saddle shouldn't cause any discomfort at all. Like any great pair of bib shorts, a good saddle for you is the one that you don't even notice is there. If you are relatively new to cycling, it is however important to stress that it can take some time for your body to get used to being in the saddle for sustained periods of time. The good news is, providing your saddle is right for you, your body will soon adapt to the new position in the saddle. However, if you're still suffering with saddle pain after the first few weeks, then it could be wise to look for an alternative option. Just like when sitting in a chair, it is the sit bones at the lowest point in the pelvis that support the body's weight, and these are crucial for saddle fit. When in the riding position, the perineal area for men and the pubic bone arch for women may also rest on the saddle. Although these areas can hold a small amount of weight, pressure reduction is critical to avoid pain and numbness in this blood vessel rich area. Sit bone widths vary between individuals and, therefore, saddle manufacturers often produce models in a range of widths. If your saddle is too narrow, you might experience undue pressure on the sit bones or an unevenness in the saddle. If you go too wide, you'll risk chafing. The differences between saddles for different disciplines relate mostly to riding position, which not only depends on what type of bike you're riding, but also how you ride it. A road cyclist competing in a road race is likely to have a much more aggressive position compared to a road cyclist on a long distance tour, for example. This position then relates to the rider's hip angle, which will affect how the pelvis interacts with the saddle, and hence, what shape is best. For faster paced efforts and more aerodynamic positions, such as those found in road riding and triathlons, flatter, longer saddles tend to work best. On the other hand, curved profile saddles are often favoured by riders in a more upright, endurance focused position, more commonly used by gravel riders, commuters, or for trail riders. Aside from saddle shape, you may also find that some saddles designed for off road riding have features to reduce trail vibrations such as flexible wing panels or more compliant shells. Although some female riders are comfortable on unisex saddles or vice versa, a lot of women prefer a woman-specific saddle. Women's saddles have slightly different shapes, including central grooves or cutouts, as well as different densities and areas of padding corresponding to a woman's anatomy. The aim here is to be supportive where it counts, the sitting bones, and relieving any pressure where it's best avoided around the soft tissue areas. Central grooves or cutouts in cycling saddles not only help to alleviate soft tissue pressure, but can also help to reduce the pressure on the perineal area for men or the pubic bone arch for women. Much like other aspects of saddle fit, it can take some trial and error to find a recessed shape that works for you. With fit out of the way, let's assess what you actually get when you spend more money on a saddle. Number one, the shell. 
The shell or chassis of a saddle is the hard base that forms its basic shape and determines how much the saddle will flex overall. More budget-friendly saddles will have a shell made of plastic or a fibre-reinforced polymer, whereas more expensive saddles will have a carbon fibre shell. It's worth noting that a specific model of a saddle will typically have the same shape regardless of whether it has a plastic or carbon shell. The advantage of a carbon shell is that, in most cases, it will be lighter and potentially stronger than the plastic or polymer equivalent. Number two, the rails. The rails of the saddle connect the shell to the seat post clamp. Steel rails will be standard on cheaper saddles, while mid-range and top-tier saddles tend to opt for titanium or carbon fibre rails. These rails are one of the main determinants of a saddle's price and can offer significant weight savings as you move up through the range. It is worth noting that carbon railed saddles may not be compatible with all seat clamps due to the rails being oval shaped instead of round. Number three, the cover. Saddle covers are made from a variety of materials, including real leather, though synthetic covers are much more common. Watch out for any prominent seams and rough patches when choosing a saddle, as these can cause discomfort depending on the location or even wear holes in your shorts. Number four, the padding. While thick, soft padding may seem like the solution for ultimate saddle comfort, over the course of a ride, this compresses, deforming around your anatomy and ends up putting more pressure on your soft tissue areas. The majority of saddles will have some padding, but some riders are even happy to ride with a bare carbon shell. These are definitely not for everyone, but highlight the importance of finding a saddle that's the correct size and shape. Number five, channels, grooves, and cutout features. Many saddles on the market feature central pressure relieving channels or cutouts. If you're experiencing numbness while riding, a saddle with a cutout or central channel is definitely something to look into. If you're not experiencing numbness, can you still use a saddle without a cutout? The answer is yes, and many people do. It really comes down to what's most comfortable for you. Be warned though, that for some people, a cutout creates a pressure point close to the edge of the channel. If you often ride in mucky conditions, it's worth considering a saddle shape that doesn't feature a full depth hole, as you're more likely to end up with a lot of dirt exactly where you don't want it. Some off-road saddles with cutouts are designed with a draining shelf to prevent this very issue. Here's how to go about choosing the right saddle for your needs. Number one, ask yourself what kind of riding you are doing. Even for the same individual, the requirements for a saddle for disciplines will differ. If you're planning on racing, or if you're a rider who slides forward during efforts and rides on the rivet, a saddle with a flat profile and a wide flat nose might be best. If you sit a bit more upright on your bike and don't move around too much, something slightly wider with a curved profile might offer more comfort. An extreme example would be saddles for time trialing or triathlon. These allow the rider to go into an aerodynamically optimal position without compromising power output. These typically have a very flat profile with a wide and stunted nose. Given that men and women are built quite differently, many brands make women-specific saddles to accommodate the differences in anatomy. That said, there are plenty of women out there who are perfectly comfortable on a men's or unisex saddle and vice versa. If you are considering a women-specific saddle, check out our separate in-depth article on bikeradar.com and there's a link in the video description. What size and shape of saddle do you need? As we mentioned before, your saddle is designed to support your sitting bones. And as we're all different, many saddles come in different shapes and sizes. Luckily, just about every saddle brand has its own proprietary fit system to help you find the right saddle in its range. Most shops will have a device to measure the distance between your sitting bones without being too intrusive.
Many shops will have a fleet of test saddles they will let you put on your bike to take it for a road test. With some, the moment you sit down, you'll know that it's not for you. But with others, it takes a bit of time to work out whether it will be a good match. Things to look out for when test riding a saddle include any numbness or pressure on soft tissue areas. You also shouldn't feel the saddle digging into your undercarriage, nor at the top of your legs when you pedal. It's best to spend at least an hour using the saddle, as it will take your body some time to adjust to the new seating arrangements. If you can spend longer, then that's even better, as that'll give any incompatibility a greater chance of showing before you invest. Some brands offer schemes where you can try the saddle for an extended period of time and return it if you're not satisfied, or others offer a free saddle swap between models until you find the right fit for you. The amount you spend on a saddle will determine the materials that are used to construct it. If you require a strong and lightweight carbon shell and rails, then that's going to come at a price premium. On the other hand, entry-level saddles with polymer shells and alloy rails can be very reasonably priced, and the weight difference really won't add up to too much in the context of a whole bike. Most people find that a level saddle is most comfortable, although some may benefit from a tilt where the nose is angled downwards very slightly. Too much tilt, however, and you might find that the pressure is then put through your wrists and hands and onto the box. Moving your saddle forwards or backwards on the rails within the safety limits shown will affect your reach to the bars and how you're positioned over the bottom bracket and pedals. Making sure you have your saddle at the optimal height will also help. A professional bike fit is a great idea for fine-tuning your position on the bike, including finding the best saddle shape, size and position for you. Also, do not underestimate the power of a quality pair of bib shorts and even some chamois cream for a longer ride. Ultimately, remember that your saddle should be totally comfortable for hours on end. By experimenting with different models and positions, and measuring your sit bone width, you're sure to find the perfect match for you. If you have any questions at all, please leave those in the comments. Once again, thank you to our sponsors ProLogo, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that little bell icon, so every time we upload a video like this, you'll get a notification.